Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video we are going to create a gun script and we will be able to fire using the left mouse button. So before we get started make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell so that you don't miss any one of my next videos. And let's get started. So first of all we need to download few weapons. I'm gonna use the dev assets website. Here you could find this sci-fi weapons pack. You can select the price that you want or you could even grab it for free as well. Also you could find this modern weapons pack, so if you want this type of weapons, you could find them in the same website, I'm gonna add the links under the video description. For me I'm going to download the sci-fi one, so let's go ahead and grab it for free. And it's going to be downloaded as a zip file, so we need to extract it and import it into Unity. And in this folder, you can import the base pack, or you could double click on this sci-fi weapons, make sure that the project is opened. Then you can double click this to import the assets and let's hit import. Once it's done you will see here this sci-fi weapons folder. We have the heavy one. I'm gonna use this weapon for now. Also you could find this example scene. Let's double click on it. And as you can see the material is purple. So to fix that we need to upgrade the materials to HDRP. And it's very simple. You can go to edit. Then render pipeline. And under the HDRP, we have here upgrade from built-in pipeline. So we need to upgrade the project materials to HDRP. And let's hit proceed. And as you can see, the problem now is fixed. We have our weapons with their textures and so on. In this video, I'm going to use the heavy one. So let's go back to the uh, scene. Under the scenes folder, we have this level scene. Under this level scene, I have this simple FPS controller. So if you didn't watch the video about it, go ahead and check it out. Also make sure to watch my video about the new input system because we are going to use it today. So let's go ahead and drag in one of these weapons. I'm gonna use the heavy one. So let's drag it under the main camera. Then let's go to the game view. Basically we need to change the transform. I'm gonna change the Y position to minus 0.25. And let's change the X position to 0.16. And we need to move it a little bit forward. Let's change the Z position to 0 0.5. And as you can see, it's not appearing. So that's because we need to change the main camera near clip. So let's go ahead and reduce it to zero. Now we can see the whole weapon. Also, I want to rotate it a little bit around the X axis. So let's go ahead and change the X rotation to three, maybe. Now we have our weapon. But if we hit play, as you can see, I can move. And I can look around, but if I hit the left mouse button, nothing is happening. So we need to add this functionality right now. Basically, we are going to create a gun script that handle all of that. So let's go under the scripts folder and let's create a gun script using right click, create, C sharp script. And let's call it gun. Then let's attach it to the heavy weapon. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So before we start writing the code, I want to explain the physics.trycast method. Basically in Unity we have a built-in function called physics.trycast. In our case we are going to give it the first person shooter camera position as a first parameter. Also we need to give it a direction. We are going to give it the forward vector of the FPS camera. And it's going to create an invisible line that starts from the FPS camera position following this uh, direction which is the forward vector. And if this line hits an object in our scene, this uh, physics to try cast will return true. Also, we could find few information about the object that we've hit. For example, we can access the tag of the object. We can check out if it's the enemy or another object. Also, we can check if uh, this object has a rigid body component so that we can add an impact force to it and so on. And in order to do that, we are going to create a right cast hit uh, object we can call it hit then we need to pass it as a third parameter optionally we can add a range parameter as well and it's going to be the range of the weapon so let's go back to the c-sharp code and over here we are going to use the new input system so let's go ahead and uh, use the namespace using unity engine dot input system so if you didn't watch the video about the new input system make sure to check it out First we need to create an input action, the type is input action, 
basically an input action is like an event like shoot reload and so on in our case let's call it shoot then we need to initialize it in the start method using shoot equals new input action the first parameter is the name I'm gonna call it shoot as well then we need to give it a binding a binding is the trigger for the action in our case in order to shoot we need to press the left mouse button so we need to pass in binding then colon and we need to use this notation mouse then slash we are going to use the left mouse button using left button also we need to be able to shoot using the gamepad and here we can use shoot dot add binding we can add bindings to the same input action for example we can use the x key on the gamepad so we need to pass in gamepad then slash and x also we need to enable the input action using shoot dot enable then down here to check whether we are shooting or not we can create a boolean using bool and let's call it is shooting and here I'm gonna use the shoot input action dot read value so this method will return a float so if we are holding the left mouse button this is going to be 1 otherwise it's going to return 0 so we need to convert it to a boolean I'm gonna use equals 1 so if this shoot dot read value method returns 1 this is going to be true otherwise it's going to be false now we can go down here and check if his shooting is true in that case we are going to call some kind of shoot method I'm gonna call it fire then we need to create it down here using private void fire make sure it's the same name and here we are going to use the right cast basically we need to use if physics dot right cast the first parameter is the first person shooter camera position so let's go ahead and create a variable over here and let's create public transform and let's call it fps cam then down here we need to pass in the fps camera position using fps cam dot position also we need to give it the uh, direction and it's gonna be the fps camera forward vector then as a third parameter we need to create a right cast hit variable the type is right cast hit and let's call it hit then we need to pass it down here using out then the name of the right cast hit and as an option we can add the range so let's declare a range variable using public float and let's call it range I'm gonna give it the default value 20 then let's pass it over here so if the invisible line hits an object this is going to return true then we can enter in this if statement and here we can access few attributes using hit.transform.tag if you want to check out the tag you can check if the object has a rigid body component using hit.rigidbody so in our case let's go ahead and use if hit.rigidbody if the rigid body component isn't null that means that the object has a rigid body component in that case we are going to add a force to it and to do that let's use hit dot rigid body and let's use add force and this method takes the vector 3 and it's gonna be the force that we want to apply to the object but we need to make sure that the force depends on the object or the orientation of the object and here I want to talk about another parameter and it's hit dot normal basically we can access the normal vector using head.normal and it's the vector that is perpendicular to the surface for example in this case it's this vector but we need to add the force in the opposite direction we are going to use the minus head.normal to push this object in this side so let's go ahead and pass in minus head.normal and we can apply an impact force so let's go over here and add another parameter using public float and let's call it impact force I'm gonna give it the default value 150 then let's go down here and multiply this vector by the impact force so let's save the script and go back into unity and under the gun script 
we can change the range and the impact force but also we need to add the reference to the FPS camera so I'm gonna drag in this main camera and before we hit play I want to add an object that has a rigid body component so let's go ahead and right click 3D object and let's use a cube I'm gonna move it a little bit over here and let's go ahead and add the rigid body component using add component rigid body also let's go ahead and add a crosshair in the middle of the screen using right click UI and I'm gonna use a simple image let's call it crosshair then let's go ahead and change the sprite I'm gonna use this one also let's go ahead and change the size and maybe we can change the color to a darker one and let's go ahead and hit play but we have an error that's because we are using the new input system you need to select the event system object then let's hit this button and the problem will be fixed so let's hit play again as you can see the cube has a rigid body component and if I shoot you see that we can push it using the left mouse button but we need to limit the fire rates to do that it's very simple let's go back to the C sharp code and let's go down here and declare a few more variables the first one is the fire rate using public int and let's call it fire rate I'm gonna give it the default value 10 so we'll be able to fire 10 bullets each second also we need to add some kind of timer using private float and let's call it next time to fire I'm gonna give it the default value 0 and under here we need to check if the shooting is true and the time dot time if the current time is greater or equal to the next time to fire but also we need to change it using next time to fire equals the current time which is time dot time and let's add 1 divided by the fire rate and now we have limited the number of bullets that the player can shoot each second but I have made a big mistake over here we need to make sure that this one is a float so you need to add this f because in C sharp if you divide an int by an int it's gonna give you an int as well so for example if you divide 1 by 5 it's gonna give you 1 and that's a big problem so make sure to add that as well and before we finish this video I want to make sure that the firing is a little bit better for example we can add a muzzle flash that we can play when the player shoot also we can create an impact effect like a bullet hole or whatever and to do that first let's go ahead and add a reference for the muzzle flash let's go up here and I'm gonna declare public particle system and let's call it muzzle flash also let's add a reference for an impact effect using public game object and let's call it impact effect we are going to reference these from the inspector and down here under the firing let's go ahead and play the muzzle flash using muzzle flash dot play and under here let's go ahead and instantiate the impact effect using instantiate the first parameter is the game object I'm gonna instantiate the impact effect then we need to add the position we can access the hit position using hit dot point and finally for the rotation we need to create it over here using quaternion and let's call it impact rotation and this time we are going to use the hit dot normal basically we have the quaternion dot look rotation we give it a direction here we need to give it the hit dot normal vector and it's going to create a rotation based on that normal vector then let's go ahead and add it as the third parameter but we need to make sure to destroy the impact effect after an amount of time so let's add a reference to it over here using game object I'm gonna call it impact then to destroy it let's go ahead and use the destroy method I'm gonna pass in the impact game object then we need to add the time for example let's destroy it after 5 seconds and let's save the script now let's go back into unity then let's go ahead and select the weapon and under the gun script we need to reference the muzzle flash as well as the impact effect so I've already downloaded these war effects from the asset store I'm gonna add the link under the video description so let's go ahead and drag in the impact effect 
and basically it's a bullet hole with few particle system and we have also these muzzle flashes I'm gonna use the second one but for the muzzle flash it needs to be inside the scene so I'm gonna drag it under the weapon let's go ahead and reset the transform then we need to move it over here and let's go ahead and add the reference to it then let's hit the play and there you go now we have this muzzle flash maybe we need to place it a little bit also we have these impact effects that is placed accordingly depending on the surface that's because we are using the head.normal vector finally I want to add the shoot sound effect and to do that I'm going to add the audio manager and the sound scripts so if you want to learn how you can easily add the sound effects into your game go ahead and check out the video under this video description basically I'm gonna drag in these two scripts and let's put them inside the scripts folder and then we need to create an empty game object using right click create empty I'm gonna call it audio manager then let's go ahead and attach the audio manager script here you could specify the number of sounds for now we have just one sound first we need to give it a name for example shoot then you need an audio clip I've already downloaded this shoot sound effect I'm gonna drag it in here then let's set the volume to 1 and the pitch to 1 as well and let's go ahead and go to the gun script and down here we're going to play the sound using audio manager dot instance then we can access the method dot play here we need to give it the name so I'm gonna pass in shoot make sure that it's the same name under the audio manager over here then let's hit play so that's pretty much it guys for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notifications bell so that you don't miss any one of my next videos and I will see you in the next one.